I'm Margaret Lundvall and president of the Women's Club. During this time of isolation, many of us are home and finding that we suddenly have freedom and time as we've never had before during our adult lives. We assume that being home with no schedule, we will get around to doing the many things we've been putting off or thinking about doing. And it's surprising then that we can't find, that we find we can't make ourselves do these things we thought were so important to us. We find every excuse not to reach our goals. I was so excited when Women's Club member, Dr. Margaret Bradley offered to do this video for us. Dr. Bradley received her undergraduate degree from Hollins University and her master's and PhD from the University of Virginia. She has been an organizational psychologist for 40 years. Margaret describes herself as an excusologist. Her definition of that is she's a combination of psychologist and expert in how to get rid of excuses before they become insurmountable obstacles. She has been a guest on radio shows about modern love and middle age can be your best age. Her book, Woulda, Coulda, Shoulda, Rapid Results, No Excuses, addresses just the situation many of us are in. She has helped thousands of people gain traction and reach their goals. Welcome, Margaret. Thank, thank you very much for that lovely introduction and for inviting me to be here with you today. I've always wanted to start a presentation by saying it was a dark and stormy night. Because it was a dark and stormy night when it changed my life. My life changed when I was at a dinner party. The weather was horrible. The conversation was great. That dark and stormy night changed my life, and I hope it'll change yours too. It was a meeting of the Tierras. We were a group of women who have gotten together for the last 27 years, and we started when we were all leaders of teams of technical, macho employee team members. They were all engineers, we weren't. And we got together to use each other as a sounding board and to laugh and to share stories and camaraderie. We still meet and we still have the same format. Our format is that we go around the table and we share a goal, something we're working on, and we give an update. At that Tierra meeting, I realized that I needed to make a change. It got to be my turn and the Tierra said, without even giving me a chance to choose which goal I wanted to discuss, they said, Margaret, have you written your book yet? Because I talked for a long time about wanting to write a book and really had made no progress at all. I heard myself saying, oh my gosh, book? I haven't written it because I've been caring for elderly parents, because I have a full-time job, because I don't know how, because there are a lot of really great books out there. And I realized that I was making excuse after excuse. And I also realized that my biggest excuse and stumbling block was that I didn't have a topic. And I hadn't chosen a topic and I'd made excuses out of fear. I was so afraid of choosing the wrong topic for my book that I hadn't done anything at all. I realized that the topic was important because they'll say, oh my gosh, you know, because of your life, she wrote the book. What did you write the book about? Well, some true examples of books that are out there. One is How Tea Cozies Changed the World. Another is Muskrat Raising for Fun and Profit. Another one is Liberace, Your Fashion Icon. And I didn't really want to go the route of choosing the wrong topic. And so I just kind of made excuses. And I listened to the Tierras give the updates on their goals and saying things like, I'm so busy, or I'll get around to it next, next month. I'll tell you about it next time. I realized I had my topic. What I really wanted to write about 
was how to reach big goals fast. So I started doing research and I found out that the number one thing that differentiated superstars and high performers from just sort of average, just puttering around kind of people was that the superstars did not make or accept excuses. Woulda, coulda, shoulda, rapid results, no excuses was born. And that night, so was my business. I did more research. I found out how people actually stopped excuses before they held them back. And what I discovered is that the first step that all these superstars took and that you can take too, is that they became aware of excuses. I think excuses are so much a part of our life that we don't even hear them when we make them or when somebody else makes one. So if the first step is become aware of excuses, what I'd like to do today is share with you all five ways to become aware of excuses so that they don't become obstacles to your own progress. The first way. The first way is identify a goal. And that seems pretty straightforward. But a lot of us get so busy with our day-to-day -day lives that we forget what our goals are. Or we think, oh, tomorrow I'll think about that. So step one is Think of a goal, identify a goal. Think about what would happen if you were at that Tierra dinner on the dark and stormy night, and it's your turn. What goal would you describe? What progress have you made? Or if you're having a hard time thinking of a goal, ask yourself the question, three months from now, what would I thank myself for having accomplished. Step one is think of a goal. You have one in mind? Because step two is ask questions. Ask yourself some questions. The first question is, is my goal specific? There was a greeting card that I saw not too long ago and on the front of it, it said, mother said, I can choose to be anything I want. I choose fabulous. That was a great goal, but I also thought it didn't meet our first criteria. Is it specific? You need something in terms of a goal that's gonna get you through the temptation to make excuses that is not sort of warm and fuzzy. It's not be fabulous or be happy. It's specific and the second question to ask yourself is, Will I know when I accomplished it? Because that's a big motivator and a good way to get rid of excuses and to become aware of them. And another question, the third question to ask yourself is when you think about that goal, is it your goal? Or is it something that somebody else wanted you to do or wants you to do? There was a book that I've never forgotten. It was written by Eric Siegel the author of Love Story, and his book was wonderful. It was called Fairy Tale because it was about an unethical used car dealer, and it was a fairy tale because it had a happy ending. And it had a wonderful picture on the front of Happy Humphrey, the used car dealer. And all I could think of when I looked at him was not would I buy a used car from this man, but would I buy a used goal from somebody else? Is it your goal or something that you've been told, oh, you ought to do this? Because it's really easy to make excuses and not pay attention if it's something that you didn't want to do in the first place. So step two was ask questions. Step three is list excuses that hold you back or have held you back in the past. We're so used to hearing them that we say things like, it's not in the budget, or I need somebody else to help me. And we don't even hear those excuses. Some of my favorites, oh, you might have some of yours, but some of my favorites, one I think I'll never forget was a true story that 
someone didn't want to come to work that day and called his boss with an excuse. And he said, I won't be at work today because I'm having car trouble. And his boss said, what's the problem with your car? And the man said, the problem is I'm not in it. So sometimes you make creative excuses. Sometimes they're more straightforward. Another creative one was that someone who wanted to lose weight said, I can't lose weight because I have metal fillings in my teeth and I have refrigerator magnets and the magnets keep pulling me into the kitchen and I eat when I shouldn't. You might have straightforward excuses, unusual excuses, but listen to them, list them, think about them because there are really two types. There's the type that you make for yourself, the I don't have time kind of excuse. Or there's a second type of excuse, which instead of our words, our actions or our words from somebody else. Oh, examples of those are when your friends or your colleagues or your teammates make excuses for you. They say things like, do you want to do that now? It's almost the holidays or nobody will notice, or my favorite, don't exercise and lose weight, you'll wrinkle. So ask yourself, what are some of the excuses that are floating around that you don't even hear? And list them. In fact, I'd like to share with you all a, another goal of mine. My new goal is that I would like to write woulda, coulda, shoulda, book two, a second book on getting rid of excuses. And I would invite you to send me any excuses that you've heard. Please send me anything that is memorable or unusual or that made you laugh. And you can send it to my website, which is mbradley at rapidresultsnoexcuses.com or you can go to stopexcusesnow.com and send it through that. But I'd really welcome your excuses and I hope that making that list will help you accomplish the third step, which is list excuses. The fourth step to becoming aware of excuses, number four is create consequences. I was in a workshop and the instructor had a big jar in the front of the table, on the table right up front. And he asked all of the participants to put a dollar in the jar every time they said the word try. It's amazing how quickly that jar filled up. We had enough money to support the whole group going out for a happy hour. I invite you to do the same thing and have a container and put a dollar in it every time you make an excuse. Or if you'd like to involve the people around you sort of as your own support group, ask your family or your team members or your work group to do the same thing. And all of you all put a dollar in that jar when you make an excuse you'll suddenly become really aware of all of the excuses that are there. Another consequence that you could do for yourself, I used a wristband um, and changed it from one wrist to the other when I ever, when I made an excuse. A wristband's great, this happens to say woulda, coulda, shoulda, but so would a bracelet. And see how long you can go before you change it from one wrist to the other. Change it when you hear yourself or somebody else says you made an excuse. So create consequences is the fourth step. And the last step, the fifth one, is understand your own excuse style and realize that different people have different excuse styles. What do I mean by an excuse style? It's your tendency to make excuses, and it's also your tendency to accept them when other people make them. I won't give you a full-fledged personality assessment, but I'd like to share with you 
three quotes and ask you to choose one that appeals to you the most. And then I'll tell you what it means for your own excuse style, what the implications are. The first quote is, plan the work, work the plan. Plan the work, work the plan. The second one is a quote from Larry Cole, who I don't think anybody really remembers. I don't remember him. He was a defensive lineman for Dallas Cowboys long ago. And I don't remember him and his playing, but I do remember what he said. Larry Cole said, anyone can have an off decade. If anyone can have an off decade is something that you can relate to, remember that choice. And the last quote is one from Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe said, have you always noticed that what the hell is usually the right answer? Which quote appeals to you the most? It'll give you an idea of your excuse style. So a quick glimpse. If you like to plan the work, work the plan, you're probably an excuse conquistador. And I use that to talk about people who really don't tolerate or make excuses. I grew up in a Navy family. That was a great description of that culture. You weren't late. You did what you said you were going to do. There were no excuses. The second one with Larry Cole, the off decade, you're a situational excuser. And you probably make excuses, but not very often because you put most of your energy into solving a problem rather than to making an excuse. And the last one with Marilyn Monroe, I would call you a situational excuser. You're probably creative and playful and like having a plan B and have an attitude of, let's do it. And if it doesn't work out, I'll make an excuse. Which one appeals to you? It's probably not as important for step four, understand your excuse style, to really pinpoint psychological traits as much as, excuse me, as it is to become aware of what yours is and to realize that other people have different approaches, different excuse tendencies. I didn't realize how important that was until I was on the street one day and someone came up to me and said, oh, my husband wants to meet you. And she told me that she had attended a workshop that I'd given a long time ago. And she said that her husband and she had taken the excuse style indicator. And they'd come up with their excuse style. They'd listed excuses. They thought about excuses because they talked for three years about how they wanted to buy a house. They'd never done anything. They'd never even looked in the uh, real estate ads. And she said, my husband wants to meet you because we thought about our excuses, we became aware of them, and we bought a house last weekend. So think about the power of excuses. Think about how you can take the five steps to become aware of them, that you can identify a goal, ask yourself some questions about that goal, list excuses, create some consequences, and understand your excuse style. Because in life, there are three choices. You can give in, you can give up, or you can give it all you've got. I hope that being aware of excuses will help you give it all you've got and have a happy, excuse-free future. <laughs>